the desert. Beautiful. Brutal. Children born into this sea face many extremes. From blistering heat to freezing cold. Beasts, men, empires, all rest quietly beneath the dunes. These are the lands of the Asarai. Survival here requires endurance, faith, ferocity. He who seeks to unite and lead our great people must embody these qualities. And the time is now. From the rising of the sun in the east to its setting in the west, our desert fortress is under attack and our sultan has grown old and corrupt. You must rise up, son of the sand. Be as enduring as the camel, as cunning as the fox, as lethal as the scorpion. You must lead our great people into a golden age. So you want to be the charismatic leader that unites the South. Let's start by talking cultural bonuses. First bonus up, caravans, 30% cheaper to build. Very nice. As you know, if you've played Bannerlord at all, those damn caravans get caught a lot and you got to put them back out. And the less they cost, the quicker you get your money back. So 30% cheaper is really nice. And for those of you that love running those caravans, this is the faction for you. On top of that, the 10% less trade penalty adds up very quickly for those traders out there. This is one of my favorite faction bonuses in the game, and it's so powerful, especially when you couple it with scouting perks that further increase your speed in the desert. So you have no penalty and you get increased speed in the desert. Your armies are flying around. My huge, almost 400-man army can catch much smaller ones. This is a crazy bonus, and it makes for a such an easy early game because looters don't have this bonus so you can easily catch up with bandit parties very quickly while they're running around the desert bandits seem to so they're a little harder to catch but just regular looter parties when you're getting started you can get in the game and start tracking down looters very quickly and it makes for an extremely easy start just be careful biting off more than you can chew because you can catch them, just make sure you can beat them. 5% extra daily wages is just LOL. For every thousand gold in wages, that's an extra, what, 50 gold? You're going to be rolling in dough. Don't worry about a 5% increase. Plus, there's traits that knock this out if you're really worried about it. Two amazing pros and hardly a con at all. The Asari have very strong culture bonuses. To be honest, this was my first big Asari playthrough, and I got to tell you, it, it's definitely my second favorite faction and almost tied with my first. I'm a Kazate main at heart, but I had never really given the Asari their due. Uh, I always hated fighting them because I find them to be very, very lethal with their javelins. But playing as the Asari has been insanely fun. I always like to give a build for those who are trying it out. But uh, if you've played the Asari at all, you know the way to go is always with those javelins, which is exactly what I did. Now, remember with my builds, I'm not min-maxing. Sometimes I'm trying to just hurry and get a playthrough to a point so that I can make a video. So this isn't about min-maxing. Uh, but I'll point out some things that I think are great about this build and some areas that I think are not good. But the key thing with your build is do what's fun for you. You've got plenty of extra points and there's companions that can fill in any gap. All of this really doesn't matter as much as people seem to think it does. So don't worry about min-maxing, just play what's fun. Unless of course, min-maxing is fun for you. Well, there you go. So without further ado, the number one thing I wanted was throwing. 
I want my javelins to reign supreme. These javelins are legitimate one shots, not one shot in the figurative sense. Like you've done a lot of burst damage. I mean, one javelin, one kill. And as you work yourself down this tree, you get more javelins, more damage, and the entire Asurai army has tons of javelins. So your cavalry have javelins, your infantry have javelins. On top of that, you've got some of the best archers in the game. You can rain death down on people. And some of these throwing traits are truly some of the most fun in the game. I mean, this one here where it increases the damage by 40%, you can one shot most horses in the game, especially if you have any momentum, you're going to just drop the mount out from underneath the knight. So if you can't get a good angle on them, throw it into their horse, they're down and they're done. This one last hit is like an execute, do 50% more damage if they have less than half their hit points. And with all the arrows and javelins flying out from your forces, there's going to be a lot of enemies on the battlefield with less than half their hit points less. So this little execute is great. And impale here is probably one of the most fun perks in the game. You can throw javelins right through guys' shields and kill them. And that applies to banner knights, it applies to uh, sturgy and infantry and those big badass shields, doesn't matter. Get some momentum, throw it into them, and it'll penetrate right through and one-shot them. It's crazy to just be able to bypass a shield is so strong. Now, in this build, I did end up grabbing a lance, and I liked the lance and the javelin combo. But when you're first starting to level up throwing, I suggest carrying two bags of javelins until you max it out because they just don't come with that many. You can come over here to saddle bags and get a couple extra, but you're still not going to have many. So it takes a little bit of time to level up. Another thing to remember is one of the best ways to level up your throwing is if you're in a siege defense, dropping rocks down on top of people when they're trying to break into the main gate actually gives you a ton of throwing skill. So whenever you can get into a siege defense, make sure you uh, wait at the gate for them to come in there and drop those rocks down because you can both throw the rocks down on top of them and the javelins down on top of them for some easy throwing skill. This is probably my favorite weapon tree in the game. I mean, between knocking people off their mounts consistently, throwing javelins through people's shields, pretty much being able to one-shot any mount in the game, you just feel like such a badass. I can't recommend maxing out your throwing enough. Up here, my other weapon choices, I did go ahead and grab a polearm, mostly because the javelin cav, the ferris, actually does carry a mameluke polearm, which is what I have here. And the combination of being able to have a stack of javelins, I think I get seven of them, basically is seven enemies dead. And then being able to transition into a couchable lance and you come in here and you grab skewer uh, where, you know, you get that 30% chance to stay couched even after you hit one person. On top of, I have one of the best mounts in the game. So the charge damage that I do plus the lance damage is just incredible. And at some point, even if you carry two stacks of javelins, you will run out of javelins. And then you're left with just a sword. And the difference between a sword and a polearm, especially when you have to fight a lot of cavalry armies like Kazade armies or a Valandian army, I mean, the, the lance is just incredible. Now, in each of my fiefs that I defend, I do keep an extra stack of jabs and I swap out the lance for another bag of javelins if I'm defending a keep because the lance isn't so great for that. But uh, overall, I really enjoyed this combo. It makes me just feel like a complete badass. Plus, by buffing up both of these, you really buff up your calf because, again, the elite troop for the Asurai the Ferris is javelin cav and they will go, they will throw their javelins and then they'll transition into their pole arms and buffing up both of those for them makes them powerful. And I'll show you that at the playthrough. Great build, very dynamic. You've got a lot of answers for a lot of problems and you are an absolute monster on the battlefield. And then of course my one handed leveled up pretty quick because while I was leveling my throwing, like I said, I carry two bags of javelins and then you switch over to the one hander. And as long as you stay by the infantry and focus on taking out enemy archers or other enemy infantry, the one hander is not so bad. But when it comes to fighting other cavalry, the polearm is just awesome. So that's what I did. Riding, of course, 
Y'all are familiar with that. Just really wanted to get that charge damage up. The other part I focused on down here was leadership because I really wanted to have a giant personal army. And you'll remember with leadership, you get plus one party size for each point above 250. Now, let me bring in this chart real quick. As you can see, I made a mistake because there's a few skills I really wanted to get that I only needed 275 to get the final perk. And after that, I really didn't need anything else. And you can see here that with six plus five, you're gonna max out at 274. So if you wanna get that 275 perk, you need to put seven attributes points in. But I made the mistake of putting in eight, which is fine again, min max doesn't really matter. But just for those of you who are concerned with that, I did wanna mention it. If you just need 275 for the final perk, then you don't need to put eight in, you can just go seven. However, if you push leadership up here to 330, what would that be? So 250, so you'd have an extra 80 troops if you went all the way up to 330 here. So putting 10 in here actually isn't a complete waste if you want to. It can be fun to change things up every once in a while, and I suggest that you do that. But see over here with Charm, once you get to 275, you just get plus five influence a day. And honestly, I didn't even need this. Like I don't even know that I would go this high in Charm because at this point with the right kingdom policies and the bonuses you get from your city buildings. I mean, I just don't need plus 20 a day on top of, you know, winning battles, which I do all the time now at this point in the game, you can see I'm rolling in it. And so I really am less convinced that charm is that good. But what can I say? I'm a charming fella. And I guess there's worse things you could call a guy. I usually use my wife for my steward. While she's still popping out puppies, because that's how you can just get a bunch of kids. It's just ha always have her with you. And again, Stuart's pretty easy to level. In this case, however, uh, my beautiful Anita, even though I forged an empire, look what she did. Gave me three daughters. So I put her in one of my cities because I'm not real happy with her. Although I should be carrying her around with me because if she dies, then I get some chance to pop some more puppies. But I mean, three daughters. She had one job. And she fucked it up. Oh, jeez. You know, I can't wait till they grow up and start getting fucked. I need an heir, woman. Where is he? And now I've been trying to knock her up again and nothing. As barren as the desert. Uh, I should go grab her and bring her with me and throw her into battle. But anyway, we're not on real good terms. And so I went ahead and threw these points in steward. A great insight that someone gave me on my Sturgia video down here in the comments is said uh, medicine is often better than steward because the medics hate rating and it's better to have a companion do steward. And I totally agree with that statement because indeed the medics like to complain a lot when you get to rating. Now you can see my guy over here is merciful, honest and generous. He has not ever raided a village. He's a very noble guy. You don't have to raid if you don't want to, but I do think you're working harder than you have to. Uh, again, the whole reason I did this is because I wanted to have as big as an army as possible. But again, you can throw this steward on someone else and it's probably better if you're going to do a lot of raiding. It is hard to find a medic that's cool with that. So sometimes it's better to put the medicine on your main character. That's a great point and something to consider. I really like the battles. I don't do a ton of simming on big battles. I like the big battles. The only ones I tend to sim are if it's, you know, my army's three or 400 and I'm just hitting somebody with 60 or 70. But if it's equally matched, I really like to play the battle. So tactics aren't as great for me, but obviously they're very powerful and you can build a tactics build where you're pretty much untouchable and you can just sim your way to the end pretty easily. Honestly, that might be one of the strongest builds in the game. There's plenty of points to go around. And again, there's no reason to min-max. There's people that beat this game on Bannerlord without assigning skills or out without wearing armor. I mean, there's just all types of crazy playthroughs out there. Do what's fun for you. But if you're going to go Asurai, I cannot suggest throwing enough. And honestly, I don't know how I'm going to give up throwing. It, it, this is just incredibly fun. I mean, it's just a blast. There's no other way to say it. Throwing is an absolute blast. You are absolutely going to love it. you got to get in there now. If you've not done a throwing playthrough or not leveled it all the way up to impale at least, you got to do it. There's a hole in your soul if you have not played with this impale ability and some of these sweet, sweet jabs. 
Now, on to the troop tree, and you'll notice right away what a streamlined, beautiful tree this is. You got your archer, your shield infantry, you got a horse archer here, and then you've got your badass two-hander. Let's start with the master archer. Now, right away, you're going to see that bow skill 160. That is Batanian Fian level bow skill. Not Fian champion, the last one, but the one before that at 160. Incredible bow skill. These are my favorite standard archers in the game. You'll see that they come with those two quivers with piercing arrows. So they have two quivers of the best arrows in the game. On top of that, they got this 62 pierce bow with that sweet, sweet 160 bow skill. These guys are amazing. And when you get a group of them, uh, and especially if you throw a captain in there on top of them, oh, they are just mwah. And they wonderfully complement the ranged striking damage of the Asurai army. So it's just, these guys are just pouring on hate from ranged. So accurate, so deadly. And then the rest of your armies run around throwing javelins everywhere. It is just raining death upon your enemies. And these guys are just fantastic. They don't have the best armor. You know, the Palatine Guard has that 34 armor. I think they have... They do all right. I mean, they're okay. They're archers. That's what they're there to do. But if you get in a trading match, like sometimes I've sat them out there to try to trade with those Volandia crossbowmen, and they usually do a good job because of how fast they shoot. But those first couple volleys, uh, the crossbowmen get out before they start getting whittled down can be pretty damaging. So just something to remember. The veteran infantry. I love them. I love them. I love them. Make him a little flower necklace to put around him if I could. He's an absolute stud. Now he's a he's he's the complete package. He's heavily armored. Right, we got this 48 body armor, just crazy armored. He's got this big ass reinforced oval shield, right? And what do we talk about javelins? These guys, 89 pierce, stack five. So you got a hundred of these guys. Guess what? That's 500 javelins they're gonna throw out, and they do a ton of damage. They got that 50 throwing, so not real great at throwing it, but when there's 100 going out every volley, it's accurate enough. The way I like to do it is have these guys hold fire until the enemy pretty much see the white of their eyes and then tell them to let loose and they'll start raining these things out. And when there's a giant group of infantry in front of them, they're accurate enough. And uh, they damage shields, they damage bodies, they just put out a ton of, of work before the enemy even gets on them. On top of that, they've got this fine leaf spear Excellent for dismounting cavalry. And as if that combo wasn't enough, they get this long cascara, which is 116 length. So great, so powerful. And again, you know, you don't like the cut damage against other armored infantry, but remember, they've already been peppered with arrows and javelins. By the time these guys switch to the sword, oftentimes they've just got to top someone off. And that 116 length really helps those guys, even in the back, reach out and do some damage. So... This infantry is outstanding, and they are a complete package. Well-armored, ton of offensive weapons, good shield. I mean, what else can you ask for in shielded infantry? 161 handed, 130 athletics, 130 pole warm. They just do it all well, and that big-ass shield soaks up enemy fire pretty well. They're like shield infantry, but they're lethal. I just I can't sing their praises enough. Like I said, put that little flower necklace on and give this guy a kiss. He's just the best. The Mamluk Heavy Cavalry. So these guys are tanky horse archers. You can see they've got that 130 bow skill. That's the same as the Kazate Heavy Horse Archer, not the Khan's Guard, but the just the regular tree horse archer. They got a step recurve bow with that 62 pierce. That's nice. They have piercing arrows, but they only have one bag of them, whereas the Kazate Horse Archer has two bags of arrows. So they shoot out some damage. And then they transition into like a more of a melee cab. They do have a shield. It's not much of one, but it gets the job done. And they've got that 116 length Cascara, which makes them pretty lethal from horseback. That, that extra length on the one-hander is nice. Um, I don't use these guys hardly ever because I play Kazate all the time. It's my favorite faction. So I'm just spoiled with those horse archers. Plus, I just love the Javelin Cav so much for the Asurai. And every one of these guys I have 
is one less javelin camp I have. They're good horse archers and they're damn tanky. I mean, you can see their horse has got that chainmail armor. It's it's they're they're good units and they're damn good horse archers. But I never ever spec into these guys. But if I pick them up along the way, or if I call a big army together and I've got twenty or thirty of them, let them go. They'll rack up some kills. And like I said, they're uh, they're some tanky boys and they do their job. And here, the Mamluk Palace Guard is your two-handed unit. Not only do they just look completely badass, but look, on top of the javelins, these guys throw axes. So you've got your infantry in the front throwing javelins. You got these guys behind them throwing axes out. You've got your badass archers shooting arrows into them. And then your jav calves going around the back throwing jabs into everybody. It's brutal. It's savage and it's awesome and you're going to love them. And these guys are incredible. I mean, they are so good. Now they're two handed at 130. They're not quite line breakers. You'll remember the Sturgeon line breaker that everyone's so fond of has that 150 and two handed, but these guys have 130 and they also have that 130 in throwing and the 140 in athletics. So they get around and they just harvest. That's what they do. The jabs soften them up. Your shield guys soak them up and everybody's kind of hurting. They got javelins in them, and these guys come around with these axes, and they harvest. That's what they do. They're incredible. I love them so much. When you look at this axe, they will, this executioner's axe. Look at that length, 115, 123 swing damage, and they just look awesome. And uh, they're a lot of fun. Do be careful, though, because, you know, that 27 body armor into some Valandian crossbowmen, uh, ooh, boy. I've lost a fair number of these guys to archers and counter javelins and charge damage and couch lances and things like that. So they aren't the tankiest guys. Make sure you tuck them in behind that shield wall while you're advancing. And if you cut them loose, just know that you're going to lose some to getting hit. But this is an offensive unit that just wonderfully complements the Asurai army. Now, on to the noble troop. And these guys are box office. I mean, they've got the 121 Pierce Jareed and they've got five of them. So again, I have about 100, 120 of these guys in my army. They're throwing out five javelins each. It is a ton of damage. And then I'm the captain, so they get all those extra plus 10% damage, plus damage to mounts, throw speed, throw accuracy. They just become monsters of the battlefield. They're taking out enemy cav. They're breaking people's shields. And then after they've thrown their 500 javelins out, they shift to this Mamluk Lance, which is couchable. So now, I mean, what do you love about that Volandian cav is that they're storming around couch lance and everybody. Well, these guys like to do that too. After they've softened them up with javelins and even in, Beef defense, they still have that 116 length Cascara. So it's just an incredible unit. And look over here, they got 140 throwing, which again, I've buffed up with by being the captain. 170 one hand, 200 pole arm. I mean, sure, the Banner Knight's got 260, but think about the javelins flying off of this guy. What are we at here? 170 riding. So, I mean, you take this complete cavalry unit. I mean, it's got range damage. It's got couch lance. And if they get stuck in traffic, they can switch to this nice long one-hander to pop the heads of those infantry bothering them. And you take all of that awesomeness and throw it on a heavily armored noble mount. And these guys, just box office. There's no other way to say it. They look awesome. That desert sun hitting them. I mean, they're just crazy cool. These guys will solve any of your battlefield problems. You're going up against the Kazates and they're sending that 200-man wave of horse archers. Send in your Vanguard Ferris and watch them level horse archers. Horse archers don't have that shield. Guess what? Those javelins love to handle horse archers for you. Got a bunch of Valandian cavalry about to swoop in. As soon as they come in, send your boys in. And these guys will soften them up with a bunch of javelins and then get to work with the lances and stuff. They're just so good. So good. And I just cannot, you got to play the Asurai if you haven't. I mean, I won't do it to you, but I could talk about these guys for two hours. They're just an incredible unit. Look awesome. They do everything well. And 
you buff them up on top of that and they're just machines. You have to love how streamlined this troop tree is. There's no bloat and all of these units feed into that javelin life uh, playthrough that you're, that you're going to just love. Now, let me show you how it all comes together to make the magic happen. Here's a few tips when it comes to the Aserai. The first thing I like to do is when I select my infantry, I like them to hold fire. Because if some horse archers or something come near them, they'll throw all those awesome javelins at them, not hit shit, and then your guys are out of javelins. So I just have them hold fire. Tip number two I'll give you is don't be afraid of the skirmish phase. Bring a lot of these Aserai archers and throw them out there and skirmish away. These guys will win you the skirmish phase a lot of times and force the enemy to come into a bad position. One tip I'll give you in regards to the jav cav is remember when you charge these guys in, if they're holding fire, they're going to charge in and, you know, couch lance and stuff like that. But if they're not holding fire, they act kind of like horse archers. So I tend to always start these guys on the right because if you start them on the left, sometimes they'll run through the enemy lines trying to go around and throw javelins. They have five javelins each, and depending on you know how close they are and if they decide to throw them, it can take them a while to get rid of those five javelins before they start running around lance and everything. So just be careful if you split them and the ones here on the left, if you tell them to charge, it's very likely they're going to charge in and start working around the formation. So I like to just go ahead and start them on the right side. If there's a cavalry unit over here, I let my infantry kind of deal with it. And I just try to be real good about moving my archers back and forth if I need to. Those are just some tips. But the key thing, always remember when you start, infantry, hold fire. Cavalry, hold fire. And then I'm just going to go ahead. Looks like they're trying to take this hill up here. And like I said, I like to get these guys up here now. The AI is not being super smart here. Now, I like to go ahead and just get my army on the offense. And so I'm going to send them in and I'm going to tell them to open fire. Now, watch as you see up in the upper right here. You're going to start seeing Vanguard Ferris kills on enemy cavalry. And you'll see the enemy cavalry start dropping very quickly as they unleash those javelins and get to work with those spears. And then my archers are over here doing God's work. And now here comes the infantry. Now remember, my infantry are all holding their jabs. And so right about here, and I'm gonna back the archers up. And I had the infantry unleash their javelins. And you'll see here, Throw those javelins in there. You can see the damage. People are like, you can craft better javelins. You don't need to craft better javelins. Oh, shit. Nope. Okay, so here come the reinforcements. I didn't see that. They're kind of pouring in from the side. And you can see. I mean, you, you just melt other armies because just the damage. The damage is just coming from everywhere. And at this point, you just charge everybody in. And we're just mopping up the slop now. What'd I tell you about harvesting, huh? Ah. Ah, oh, jeez. Old Sultan had a little bit of booze before the battle started. What of it? And that's how it's done. Never forget the great Sultan of Oklahoma. Sword of Fury. Javelin of Justice. Shield of the Faith. And his ferocious Oklahoma gang who forged you in the way of the javelin. Remember, my friends, dance like a butterfly, sting like an acerai. Oklahoma out.